Hello, this is Aril from Alloy. Uh, today I'm going to show you how to level your setup and talk about why it's so important to level your setup. We're going to be using the Valoi 360 system, uh, this Panasonic camera and a mirror that you can find in our web store. So first about why leveling your camera is so important. Um, here we've got a kind of traditional setup for camera scanning and we can see that the camera, you can probably see it, it's not perfectly um, parallel, but um, so when, when the camera is is sitting sideways like this, I'm going to exaggerate it to, to really show you. Uh, you can uh, see here that the sides uh, are going to skew, so they're going to become a parallelogram. Uh, we can show you an example of this by just taking a picture. There we go, show you the preview of that. And uh, you'll see that not only is it par parallelogram, but uh, because the sensor is closer to the film on one side, the uh, area that's closer is going to be slightly out of, well, both sides are going to be slightly out of focus, whereas only the middle is going to be in focus. Uh, so our goal is here not to, people often talk about leveling, but when we call it that because it's easy, but really we're talking about making the film and the sensor parallel. So they need to be on the same plane. Um, traditionally, people have used a, a level, a spirit level, or a digital level, and they've tried to make both the film holder and the camera um, level to the gravity of the Earth, which is uh, works. You both end up being parallel, that's true, but it's not necessary for both to be, uh, to be level. They just need to be parallel to each other. So let's go ahead and go through that procedure and uh, just make it level. This shouldn't, once you've done it a few times, it should only take you kind of 10, 15, 30 seconds, and uh, it is really effective and very precise if you use a mirror instead of using a, a traditional level, and it should be quicker. So um, the first thing you want to do is set up your height to roughly where you want to be. So I usually just turn on my light source and put in some film, and that way we can see that we're on roughly the correct height. Um, then we just go ahead and kind of frame it up, up roughly. So our camera is pretty much in the place where it needs to be. Um, so now that I've put my mirror here, uh, we're going to see it in the preview that it kind of goes blurry and black, uh, but uh, putting the mirror on top of the holder ensures, because the top of the holder is parallel to the film, to the film plane, the uh, mirror being on top of that, which is obviously completely flat front and back, uh, we can put it on top and uh, it becomes parallel with the film. Uh, through a little trick of optics, we are going to align the center of aperture, which we can look through and um, just align the center of the aperture with itself, since we can see a reflection of the camera. Um, to do that, now it's a bit blurry, so I'm just going to hand focus it. Uh, it will be a bit difficult to see, but we can focus it. So uh, because it's twice the, wait, I'm going the wrong way, because it's twice the distance of the distance from the film to uh, the camera, so the light is going bounce, going, going up, uh, going down, and then up again. It's twice the distance, so uh, the focus will be different from, as you can see here in the preview, now the film is out of focus, but the mirror is in focus. And you can see uh, with the overhead that uh, the aperture and the, the front of the lens is visible. The other thing that uh, you'd want to do is just turn up the, the light a bit on the screen. I'm I have my camera in aperture priority mode and I'm just using exposure compensation and have the, the preview to, to uh, I've had it set to preview the exposure of the camera. So uh, dialing in a bit of exposure compensation doesn't really matter what you do. I'm just gonna do some plus two here so we can see it nice and easy. Uh, and now we see that the aperture is in the middle. Uh, you also see from the overhead now that there's a cross right in the middle of my screen. This is usually some kind of setting in your camera Currently, I have a, a grid set up and the cross in the middle. Uh, some cameras won't have a cross in the middle. They will only have a kind of a center grid or some, some, some kind of um, grid that lets you uh, cross grid or something that lets you find the middle of the screen. Uh, but the objective here is to put the middle of the sensor, which is what we can see on the screen, um, line that up with the middle of the aperture of the lens. Uh, there are two ways of doing this. Either we can move our camera back and forth, and you can see that it, uh, once we move it, it, it moves along. However, that only gives us one axis. We need to adjust it on two axes. 
that's why in the 360 system, two of our kits, the two kind of higher end kits, include a base that has leveling feet. Uh, this is not just for you to make sure it sits stably on the table, though it's useful for that too, but it's also to adjust the height. They have uh, quite a lot of, um, quite long threads, so you can adjust the heights uh, individually in each corner up and down so that we can get this uh, plane as well as the, uh, the plane that we can adjust with this. So I usually just adjust this plane first because it's easy to move the camera and I'll just line it up roughly with the center of the aperture. So now it's on one, uh, adjusted on one axis. And then I use the other, the other axis I adjust with the feet. So uh, I usually, instead of just starting to, to screw, I usually check, oh, is it this way or is it, is it this way? Right, okay, so now we know that we want to adjust this side upwards. Uh, we can use the feet. I'm just going to twist them. I usually just leave it in place and you can see very slowly as I start to twist them, it's very precise. As I start to twist them, the center of the aperture is coming into the middle of the screen and we're lining up this cross. If you wanted to, you could do kind of a final um, little adjustment with, with the feet in either direction here. It, you, to, to get the fine adjustment on the axes, I never do it, that's why I'm being a bit clumsy. I just use this, but yeah. So when is it good enough? Any, any sort of leveling that you do within, as long as you can see, you can kind of see the, the front of the glass of the lens. Uh, as long as you're like well within that and like eyeballing it being in the center, it's good enough. Uh, it's better than you're gonna get with a spirit level by far. And it's much quicker as you can see. Once we've done that, we don't need our mirror anymore. We can just put it to the side and focus our film back. So obviously now it's important that you don't go ahead and hit your camera or something. And this is why I said, start with adjusting your height. Okay, we can do a little bit of adjustment afterwards just by um, adjusting it a, little, a few, few millimeters up and down, but ideally you want to adjust the height before and you don't want to mess too much with your setup afterwards. If you do, you can just go ahead and slap the, uh, the lens back on, focus again, uh, slap the mirror back on and focus again, and uh, just to double check. It's better to be sure than to scan a bunch of film and uh, have some out of focus unparalleled pictures. So now that we've done that, I'm just gonna go ahead and focus. I would usually use a, uh, a triggered remote and we'll stop down, change some setting and just take a preview for you. So the height here isn't perfect, but we set it up just to show you the leveling. Um, and you'll see that now the whole picture is in focus and all of the lines are par um, parallel to each other and the corners are 90 degrees. That's what you want. Okay, that's it. So if you have any questions, as always, feel free to reach, to, reach out to us by email. You can leave a comment or you can message us on Instagram. We're always pretty available there. If you feel like there's something that's unclear, don't hesitate to reach out to us. That's it. Thank you very much.